today we are cooking in the wok. Yes, we are. We're going to cook some beef with onions and bell peppers. And it required a nice sauce to be made. You can find the recipe for all this stuff. It's going to have ginger. You can find it on YouTube. It's going to have garlic and all kinds of good stuff. And my daughter is over here learning, aren't you? Say hi. I'm Say following the master's instructions. There you go. Yeah, I love it. I love it. See, see guys, all you got to do is take charge. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, we're fixing to put this in the wok. We got to heat up the wok real hot, and we have a pot of rice cooking here. And uh, I bring my daughter over. She's the one that does all the dishes as we cook. I hope this is going to be good. I'll tell you, it, it sure smells good already. The sauce smells really good. So we'll see what happens. Right now, I've got the onions and bell peppers in that really hot wok, and I'm blanching them. I'm kind of making them a little bit soft. We're doing it in a cup of water. You can, you know, however many onions or bell peppers you want. My grandson uh, is doing all the talking in the background. He's home on, on leave from the Air Force. I don't know what that thing is right there, but I don't like it. We're going to get rid of it. All right, we're just going to kind of blanch it, and then I'm going to drain the water off in a colander. All right, the vegetables have been blanched, and the wok has been heated back up. Now we're going to go ahead and put some oil in the old wok. And she's smoking quite a bit there. That's what we want. Now we add in our, our garlic. There's my spatula. I had to take it off the stove. It's pretty hot. Okay, throw in the meat, Shannon. Put some meat in there. Just throw it right in, dump the whole thing in. Oh, All right, that's good. Now we'll put it back over here, crank the heat down a little bit, and I'll just start stirring until it's pretty much cooked on one side. She's beginning to look good. We still got to put the sauce on. The daughter will be putting the sauce on here in a minute. I'm kind of the, the stirring guy. I just got to kind of make sure it's mostly cooked. And after the sauce thickens up just a little bit more, we're going to take our blanched onions and bell peppers and pour those in there and cook them for about maybe 15, 20 seconds more, and that'll be it. We will be done. So it looks good, smells good so far. Just got to get that sauce to be a little bit thicker. The rice is done. We're going to wait a few seconds till it cools down. And this is our stir fry. Our beef and onion bell pepper stir fry and it looks really good it really does I think we got just about the right amount of onions and uh, bell peppers but you know you mix whatever you want remember there's a YouTube videos there's two or three YouTube videos on the, how to make this and I, I kind of made them you know a little bit of this vid and a little bit of that vid that's how it's done I think Oh, well, Grandma, she's not going to eat any of it. She's going to eat her ravioli stuff over there, aren't you? I cannot wait to dig into this. I cannot wait to dig into this. Well, I decided to go ahead and get my radishes in for the year. The temperature's still nice and cool, and I don't see any uh, frost coming in case they were to bud up and poke out of the soil. I planted some of these uh, French breakfasts. They're kind of an elongated kind. Last year we had no luck, so I got no chance to taste them. We had some cherry bells, uh, a couple different kinds of cherry bells. I planted some white icicles and some giant crimsons. And there they are in the ground. I'm getting ready to cover them all up. Uh, wifey has decided that she wants okra grown right here. Now it's a little early in the season for okra, but this half of this patch will be okra, which is a member of the cotton family. And the hotter it gets, the better it grows. So. A few years ago, I grew okra. The plants were 10 feet tall. I had to bend them down to get to the okra at the top. I couldn't, I just couldn't reach it. So we'll see how that goes. We'll be planting that later uh, when the temperature really starts to perk up. In the interest of furthering our education concerning crystals, I thought I would go ahead and uh, take one of these bad ones and open it up and let everybody see what it looks like. So... Here's what we have. Just like I said, a very thin sheet. Let me zoom in here really close. I want the folks to be able to see this really good. It's a very thin sheet 
of crystal. See it? And it's got a, con a contact on each side. And they're connected to the pins by little coil wires that hold them in, that make contact with those connectors on each side. Those little flat paddles, I guess. Anyway, uh, if you see all that black stuff around there, that black stuff is actually what we refer to when we're dealing with mica. We, we, it's called silver mica disease. Well, this is not mica, so I guess this is silver quartz disease. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you'll look at that black part on the left, that little that little uh, area right there on the left, right there. Looks like it might be either burned or a little bit, uh, I don't know, a little, little bit of that uh, tarnish on there. Both sides are like that. Now, what I'm going to try, I'm, I'm going to mess around with this thing. I mean, we have nothing left to lose, right? It just comes up with a zero every time I try to test it. I'm going to dip this in some Tarnex and see what it does. Alright, we're ready to go now according to the bottle of Tarnex. It says don't use it on aluminum. So I'm not going to put the aluminum base into the Tarnex. By the way, this is very, very soft aluminum. These cans, I, I, matter of fact, I, I used a pair of pliers to just kind of hold it in place while I cut it off because it was beginning to get hot while I was grinding it. And just the slightest pressure pushed the sides in. So. Let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and dip this crap in here. <laughs> this is going to be fun. A little experiment here. I don't know if it's going to remove the, tar the tarnish or not. Probably not. Well, it's doing something. <laughs> we'll go ahead and dip it in as much as we can here. Look at that. It's beginning to clear it up a little. <laughs> Who knows? I might just leave that on there for a while like that. Let it soak and then take it over and rinse it off with water. Let it dry and bring it back and test it again. So it'll be f This is really interesting. This is the kind of stuff I like to mess with. I love to tear stuff apart and see what's inside. And you're beginning, you know, you're getting the benefit of all this. Isn't that cool? Well, that's about as clean as I'm going to be able to get it. I took a Q-tip to it also clean the connectors at the bottom but that black one right there looks like it may not be may not be actually connected to that paddle I might try a multimeter reading on that before I shoot the juice to it alright I've got the uh, red lead of my multimeter connected to the to the end of the uh, paddle that has the burnt spot now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch it to that paddle right there. I, I, I call it a paddle. It's just a contact. what it is. I'm just going to touch it right there and see if I get a reading. All right, here we go. Keep your eye on the multimeter. It's good. <laughs> Move it over to this one. Now we'll touch this side and see if we get a reading. Yes, we do. All right, the only problem I can see that might, we might be having with this thing is there's a slight crack in it. Let me see if I can zoom down in there where you can really see it. Can you make out that crack up in the top left-hand corner? See it? little white line there. That could be our problem. I don't know. Let's go ahead and shoot the juice to it again. All right, here it goes. We're going to crank up our voltage. I'm going to use the course adjust this time. I want to go a little bit higher. Matter of fact, I want to go all the way up to 12 volts. This thing is designed to take up to 15 volts, this uh, tester. And of course, we have nothing. I, I put it back in the can and taped it together so it wouldn't be laying on the desk. I don't know why it's not working. This would have been, this is supposed to be a uh, 18 mega cycle. Nothing's happening. This thing uh, is supposed to go up to 15. Let's take it up to 15. Almost 15. Still nothing. Well, I don't know why. Maybe that crack has something to do with it. She, she just doesn't want to vibrate anymore. But hey, that was a fun experiment, wasn't it? 
that was a little learning experience. At least you know now what's inside there and how they're connected and what they look like. And it was worth the effort. But I wish it would have come up with at least some kind of oscillation. I have received another package <laughs> from another of our good subscribers, Dave up in Michigan. Now, Dave contacted me before he sent it, and I said, hey, look, you know, I don't want you spending any money. And, and he said, no, don't worry about it. This thing cost me zilch, nada, nothing. And I said, all right, okay. He said it, was, it cost me absolutely zero. So I said, all right. So he went ahead and sent it, and I, I haven't opened it up yet. Unfortunately, it came in just before I'm getting ready to go to work, so we'll have to open up this one in the morning. It is the next morning, and it is time to do it to it. I haven't a clue what's in here, not a single clue. So let me go ahead and start cutting, and when I get the first layer off, we'll, we'll come back. <laughs> well, we got the top off, and boy, we got tons of ghost turds here. So uh, maybe there's a Hooters girl down in there. <laughs> maybe she'll pop up at any second. Well, anyway, I better take this inside and get rid of these ghost turds. They'll be blowing all over the yard. Then we'll come back out. Well, whatever it is, it's an excellent job of packing. Lately, folks have been really packing stuff well. I'm proud of everybody. Let's cut this off now. Well, I'm still, still opening up and I still don't know what it is. Keep digging. Well, this is a surprise. I didn't expect anything like this. I didn't even know it was a radio in there, but it's a Howard. I've never been up close with a Howard, never seen a Howard in person. That's pretty neat. Let's turn it around and look at the back. Let me see, we've got one, two, three, four, five. It's a six tube setup with a two gang tuner, small transformer. Boy, that transformer is pretty rusty. Whew. Well, that looks pretty good to me. It's got a built-in AM antenna, a loop antenna all the way around that connects with these two wires right here. But there's no uh, there's no label on the inside as to the model number. It just says Howard Radio on that speaker right there. How about that? That's pretty. It also takes a phonograph. There's the connector there doesn't have the model number. You can't hardly make it out. It might be right there at the top of that thing, but I don't know. 65 watts. Dave says, I've never seen or heard of a Howard radio before. This one was given to me by a friend years ago. I know there was a Howard uh, piano company, and they were bought out by Baldwin. It is yours to do with as you wish, perhaps a video. As promised, it cost me nothing. Good luck. No, scratch that. Congratulations to the 2016 Potato King. Oh, I tell you what, I like Dave a lot. <laughs> I just, you know, it's a good thing he didn't send this to old Buzz. He'd be crying all over this letter. It says, best 73s, Dave, uh, P.S. the string that uh, was in the radio did not want to get lost. The, uh, the dial string is back here. What I do with the dial string, it was just here. So it fell down, don't want that to happen. Yeah, I'll have to restring the dial string, won't be any problem. I'll try to find out what the uh, model is and get back with you here. First, I'll tell you what, let's take another look at the front. That's pretty cool there. All the, the knobs are good. Wonder if these things work. Yep, they do, they move. That one does anyway. Let's see, I guess that's tone. I think that's a tone. And this, I don't know what this is. I'll have to check it out later. I'll give me a schematic on this baby. This, this one doesn't want to work. Might be the band switch. Anyway, well, that doesn't need a band switch. It's strictly a uh, broadcast band. Anyway, that's pretty cool. That is really neat. Let's see if I can find that model. I'm on the Radio Attic website, and this is a Howard 906 SB. That's exactly what it is. 906 SB. They don't say what year it comes from. But that's it right there. Show sure enough. Let me see if I can go on Nostalgia Air and find out what year it was. Well, according to Nostalgia Air, it just says pre-1950. But I did find out that uh, the dial string will be easy to put on. 
And I also found out that the right hand knob on that radio, the one that I uh, wasn't sure about, is the phonograph switch. You can plug a phono in the back and then it flips between the radio and the phono. So that's pretty cool. Well, let's take, uh, let's take one more look for this, uh, uh, this uh, 906 SB. I think I can come up with a, a little better year on it. Pre-1950 would mean it's probably in the late 40s, but we'll see. I'm on the Radio Museum website right now, and the same exact radios here, except the grill is a little bit different. I imagine they made different, different uh, models of it with the same, with the, you know, with the same number. Anyway, this, according to what it says here, it's from 1948. 1948, right there it is. Okay, all right. Well, that's it for now. Uh, the cabinet's in, you know, really not bad of shape. I don't think I'm going to have to refinish this. I really don't want to. It's in pretty darn good. It's got a few scratches and digs and a little bit of the finish missing off the top, but I just don't want to strip this one down. Huh? I wouldn't want to, unless I have to. Now, if I have to, I will, but I don't. This, and this, this grill work, by the way, is plastic, I think. I think these are plastic, just like this right here. And that's probably why a couple of... Uh, that's a couple of those uh, that that the two sides on that radio I showed on the uh, on the website had different grill work in it. This may have broken out, or they just decided to replace it with something else. Anyway, this is really nice, and I appreciate you sending it. You're a heck of a guy. Total surprise. I didn't expect this. I, I thought it'd be some something else. When that box arrived and I saw the size of that thing, I was like, "You got to be kidding! Look at the size of this box." <laughs> anyway, I appreciate it, and I. And I'm glad I got a chance to share it with all of our uh, good subscribers, you know. The young folks or the folks that, you know, don't see this sort of thing every day. I've never seen a Howard up close, and now, you know, at least they know what it is. So we're going to stick this one back on, you know, in the shed on, the, on one of my shelves out there and cover it up. I hope to be retiring within the next year sometime. And that, I'm going to have a whole lot more time to, to work on radios and Especially in the winter time, you know, I'd like to be able to get retired one of these days before I croak on the job, you know, unless something terribly uh, goes wrong with our financial, our country's financial system between now and then. So thank you again, my friend. You're a good guy. So we all know what that means, don't we? Shout out to Dave in Michigan. I think we'll end this video uh, with me working, you know, spray painting a chassis I'm working on, old radio chassis. It's a 1931 airline made by, you know, sold by Montgomery Ward. 1931 airline, uh, model 6214. There's another series uh, on it right now that's active. Um, I think we're up to like 26 or 27 videos on it. And uh, if you want to bounce on over there and take a look at it, Anyway, I've got to, I, we're getting to the point where we've got to put some stuff on top of this chassis, so I need to put another coat of primer and a few, a little bit of silver paint and stuff like that. So anyway, until next time, this is John.